did you think of James episode? I was absolutely blown away, blown away. And, awesome. and what came up for me is that when it comes to leadership, it's based on your interests. I think he hit on so many things and like, guys, I've taken two pages of notes, seriously. And I'm normally not that person. Like Phil, you know me. Um, I, I'm not that person to sit there and take notes, but I was just like, okay, like I got to step it up for this fast 15 because, yeah. you know, on the coattails of James, like it was amazing. And by the way, James, if you're listening to this wicked job, keep doing what you're doing as a founder and owner spread your word. I agree with Phil and Kenny. And if you ever want to spot on our podcast, email us. You're absolutely in. like, it was amazing. So like for me, I had a solid six takeaways and I've even okay. shared one of them with my group to positively oh. challenge them, my community okay. of consultants. And so for me, where the biggest takeaway was as a leader, we need to have a strong sense of self because it, it bleeds into our culture. And there were a few points of, of your debate, Phil and, and Kenny around, you know, can we shift culture? What happens if we have a leader that has best intentions, but they're not great at leading, what do we do with our teams then? And, and my mind ever since listening to this podcast has really kind of been, you know, taking away from a social media perspective, from my own team perspective, and from the sense of intuitive performance, uh, where I live and breathe and love. The other points that he was really hitting home was around cultures, how things look and are when no one's looking. And that really hit home for me. Did that not resonate? Because we've interviewed over 80 CEOs in the past 12 months, Kenny and Phil, and it's ranged from anywhere is that culture starts with me and it trickles down to, you know, the, the debate, the flip side, culture starts with my teams and, and it's radiates up to somewhere in between where someone authentically and perfectly said culture changes based on the size of your organization. So it starts with me when my company's small, but when it grows, it's an organism of itself, which kind of bleeds into James's thought is that culture is how things look when no one's looking. Cause that's truly what happens. We can write perfect policy and vision statements and creeds and do all the right things from an HR or a leadership perspective. But when we step away, how is our organization really running? And so, you know, it's a, it's a bit of an onion. There's so many different layers to it. And it's so interesting. The other thing that James said that I absolutely loved, because I hate the word no, is so find a way to yes. I love this because this is how we felt, right? Like, like the I gelato totally, was I, already I, I, like, we're food people. We love it. And the gelato yes, is amazing. I loved and it. And then he stepped into that. And it was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Now the gelato is the least most interesting thing in the room. But, you know. <laughs> exactly exactly and and like it just it's infectious especially when you already have that baseline passion around people and then the audit what am I really curious about I think that goes back or that trickles back into the self-awareness levels within our leaders so you know his example was Steve Jobs he was really excited about tech that's what he wanted to get curious about not his people and culture right not that he did it a total disservice but that was his style. I've been a strong believer that, you know, what's written on the walls must align with what we're actually doing. So oftentimes what happens is, and what I'm starting to, to kind of evolve to is that it's not that our leaders are fake or that they want to trick us, but rather they don't know what they don't know. So sometimes we feel that we're acting a certain way Mm -hmm. and we're really not because our stats show us that it's only 10 to 15% of leaders that are actually self-aware, meaning that I know how I feel. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm doing. I know my intentions and everything aligns, right? So when we think about it from that perspective, a lot of leaders have the best intentions, but it's getting super self-aware as to what are we curious about? What are we willing to do and not willing to do? Because sometimes we have CEOs or presidents that come in and and they want to raise funding, speaking to the tech side of things, right? Right. And and they want to get bought out, essentially. They want investors. That's their goal. So ultimately having that balance between people and operations is not going to be there. And that's okay, provided that that is what's marketed within their company. That's what's in their culture, right? So we're a great organization that strives for growth, period, right? But that still comes from the authenticity of the actual, of the leader. As long as you, if I don't care if like Steve Jobs was Steve Jobs. Yeah. Right. Steve Jobs was, was very curious, very innovative, 
I don't think he was probably the best leader on the planet. I've never read anything said he was a great leader per se. It was really that he was just who he was. That's yeah. fine. He was a and he had people under him who yeah. did maybe the better job yeah. leading, et cetera, whatever. Right. Like, right. like Cook, who's obviously shown that he's much more in tune with himself as who he is as a leader and he can do right. different things, right? So sorry to interrupt their band, but no, I just, no, no, it's okay. That whole like episode that. just got me so wired. Like I just love <laughs> you. I just you. love talking every minute. I just love that guy, man. I thought it was just so good. Yeah. And and kudos to, to seriously, Phil and Kenny, because I mean, I, I've been on your episodes a few times before. Mm-hmm. So obviously I have some personal bias there, but realistically, kind of standing and standing by and, and listening and seeing how you're growing, you're doing a really great job of pulling the passionate leaders out of the work, you know, out of the woodwork, essentially, right? You're doing a, a wonderful job at talking Thank to you. people that align with, you know, the GG, the great <clears throat> good, right? And it's it's about creating really cool things that can be sustainable and people are top of mind because with other people, we don't have products, essentially, is, is my values and my thought process. But going back to James, judgment, Judgment is such a huge thing in leadership and and we don't even know it. So I'll give you an example and then I'll tell you my huge epiphany around this, the correlation. So I'm running a whole person uh, performance leadership Mm -hmm. cohort. The leaders that we had in the last cohort, they were absolutely immaculate, like strong baseline knowledge, totally curious people, open to to constructive criticism amongst their group because it was within a company. They were like A players wanting to learn and humbled at the same time. Like it was seriously like, you know, to be, to be borderline grotesque. Mm -hmm. It's like a facilitators and coaches wet dream. Like it was like, (laughs) it was like, honestly, like, I feel like I'm missing something, not meeting with those people on a weekly basis anymore. But one thing that came up from a, from a, a place of truth or honesty from one of the leaders is like, Hey, Ange, looking at my own emotional intelligence, I'm a judger. And I'm like, Hmm, tell me more about that. And they were like, well, I have the ability to be self-aware. We know that because we did um, evidence-backed testing within the group as well. I know that I'm compassionate and I know that I'm service orientated, but I do judge my team members. So based on where they were at, because they were at a strong director slash VP level, um, they had expectations that team members had strong problem solving skills, their own critical analysis internally, um, the ability to action. And when they weren't, some judgment came in. And so this circles back to James's point. When we are judging, we don't have enough information. And so when I continue to ask coach approach questions, this leader, I'm like, well, well, what makes it easy for you to judge this person? Mm -hmm. And, and then we kind of went down the road together in a group coaching perspective. And the fact of the matter was they didn't have enough information. And so if we flip this to our everyday instances from a culture perspective, how much judgment is coming into play and Mm -hmm what attention are we paying to with regards to self-awareness what's going on around us are we keeping our finger on the pulse like there's a lot of things that can be overwhelming even even just thinking about this conversation right or this topic i should say but it's not it's not something that's not manageable if there's constant work i think that's a big key is that when it comes to culture it does take work from a leadership right. perspective we can't just set it and forget it what's um I know it's a, a fast thought, so um, we're going to run out of time. But what what's the um, how critical is feedback loops? Because you you know as you as you become self aware, you know everybody strives for that, but you you also aren't you you don't know what you don't know, right? So if you're not mm. self aware, you may not be aware that you're not self aware. So what is how important are feedback loops within the company so that as you make adjustments, as you become a leader, because even James, like the uh, really amazing thing about him is he seems to have this dynamic feedback loop, right? So he adjusts to the people around him. He spends time with them. He's got the, you know, the- He's meeting uh, all the time with them. Like the he has this monthly meeting the founder, things, the one-on-ones. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. So how, how does a leader, you know, because I think that's, to me, that's a critical part of like being better. I think that's what keeps him in check, Phil. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. So to, to answer your question in yeah. short, it's imperative because it, it comes down to connection as humans, we mm-hmm. want to be connected. Right. And so from a leadership perspective, connection and feedback loops are, should be a huge priority 
Um, it actually should be kind of like a, not just an, an agenda item or staple, but it should be a performance goal mm -hmm. in the sense of how well are we doing getting feedback and are we actioning some of this feedback as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, be because it, again, it touches on every pillar of our organization, this thing called culture. Mm -hmm. So having connection and communication is really important at the, at the end of the day. Um, so, you know, there's what I would call structured and unstructured feedback loops, right? So structured being, here's our performance reviews or our check-ins, whatever we decide to do. Um, here's our um, pulse surveys. Here's our quarterly surveys, like those types of things structured. Unstructured is, you know, walk and talks, right? So if you have, if you're regionally, if you have someone in your area, you're going out for a walk or you're grabbing a coffee, you're just kind of shooting the breeze. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? How can I make your job better? How can I be better? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing this. What do you see? Um, or maybe it's it's making the, the virtual space, right? Other ways for connectivity can be more fun or gamified. Um, so we're hearing a lot of tech companies are opening up different Slack channels just for memes. And <laughs> there was one group they had, I think it was anywhere in between five and 10 different channels for themes. So it was like cooking themes dogs and cat themes, um, you know, and those types of organic conversation create connectivity, which creates a level of safety, which allows us to talk about the real things. Right. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, um, me too. And I asked you a question, but you kind of had yeah. six takeaway. Where are you in your. <laughs> oh yeah. <I'm> six. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. I did not number them. Um, so yeah, I basically, the judgment piece was the last part. Okay. Okay. Um, so technically five, um, ultimately the six is that it was an amazing podcast. And uh, if anyone hasn't had the opportunity to listen to it, they need to. Uh, oh, so much fun. Oh, there's, and, and just the yeah. passion between you and uh, Kenny and you, Phil, as well. Uh, when you get guests on your, on your uh, uh, podcast each week, I should say, you get fired up, right? So totally. people need to hear your commentary it's as well. Amazing. Oh, I should, you know, I'd go work for the guy. I like, seriously, I would come out of this gig world of mine. I, if, if a guy like that phone, I'd have a hard time saying no, <laughs> not to full time. I really would. Because like a guy like that, just, I just found him so inspiring. Yeah. It's it just like, I just, I, I, just Without saying, even knowing, he seemed like a wonderful guy to work resume. for. Definitely. Can you imagine if I could say that? <laughs> no, you know. Oh my but, God. But honestly, guys, like what I really appreciated it is that he's not just, he's not just one of those leaders and I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing on anybody because everybody has their own journey. Right. But we know leaders that have been at an A or B school that have had great trajectories that are polished that, you know, talk the talk and they can walk the walk. Mm -hmm. This guy, you know, he's, he's been faced with adversity. Um, you know, he's showing also a different way that you can be an amazing leader and not go the classical route because there's different routes to everything, which right. gives us different advantages yeah. and pros and cons. Yeah. The other thing that I was actually amazed by, because <clears throat> Not only did I take notes, I actually looked at his website because I have seen his product and so he's love it. Um, and on his website, it, the thread just continues, right? So um, he's B certified. They're donating 1% yeah. to, you know, humanity, you know, uh, preventing food poverty, that type of thing. Um, five years with this guy's company, you get to go to Europe, cheese and rice, like hire me as your, your chief Thank culture you. officer i'll be there 100 <laughs> i told she's all gonna have full-time work he's gonna have right? everybody wanting full-time yeah. yes definitely so i mean i guess what came up for me at the end of the day was how can we collectively we across north america across the world be able to identify culture through these companies like not just the net netflixes or microsoft's or apple um although they do a great job and give us insights as to what they have access to from a culture perspective. But I think these companies like James has, like they should be up on a pedestal and be like, Hey, yeah. this is a great business case. This is yeah. what it should look like. And here's right. why, right? right? Like how do we influence other companies or how do we influence it so that it's shared information? Because at the end of the day, a lot of leaders want this they're not really sure of the how, like, that's the biggest question that comes across my desk every other day. And how do we do this? I love this. How do we do it? Can, can I, I still think, you... what, sorry, go ahead, Phil. No, no, sorry, sorry. So I, I, I still wanted... think a lot is how he's just hardwired. I, mean, mm -hmm. I hate to say it that way. He's just hardwired to be this type of person. Like, I think what you said before, when you get a lot of the polished, the ones who do it, 
it's there and it's not it's a bad choice of words but it's, it's quasi pretentious right it's not that you can read through but you can see it mm-hmm. this guy didn't this guy's not that guy mm-hmm. i think this guy's mm-hmm. hardwired to do to be like this this is yeah. this is what he's sort of this is him which i think is why i liked him even more I'd like to positively challenge you there, Kenny. And, and this is just kind of my human skills facilitator slash coach coming up uh, or performance coach coming up is I think that some individuals have the organic advantage and that it can be learned, meaning can that be learned for sure, yeah. right? Meaning yeah. that our, our, you know, uh, a school individuals that seem somewhat pretentious, although not meaning to, no. it can be learned. Um, yeah. If they want to, <laughs> it's really yeah, but it's it's like anything. Anything can be learned if you really want to learn it. You can yeah. also, but you can also figure out how to get out of your own way, right? So mm-hmm. I think I think that if you are that's a, a whole CEO different skill set too, though. Yeah, yeah, but but it's 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 part of the adapting process, right? Is if you realize sure. like, hey, I'm going to keep judging. There are mm-hmm. things you can do. Like you could, if you're a CEO, you can go to your CFO, the person who handles your finances, and go, listen. I want to become one of these companies that donates back 1%. Help mm-hmm. me do the financing part of this. Take mm-hmm. it out of right. my hands, right? So it's it's not up right. to me now. I'm giving you the charge that you're going to do this and you're going to tell me how it gets done. And then me as the CEO, as a leader, I might recognize that I don't have the ability to make this thing happen because I'm going to keep getting in my own way. So I'm taking mm-hmm. it out of my hands. I'm charging you right. to do it. You can do that without me. And now I can say, you know, we're, we give back 1% and I didn't have anything to do with it. All I did was get out of my own way. So I think Mm -hmm. that as CEOs, you can, you don't, you don't need to do it all. What you need to do is recognize what you can't do and let somebody else do it. Even the B Corp thing, you don't have to do it. You can charge your team to do it. And then you just have to recognize that you have to get out of their way when they're doing it. Right. right. Like I, I still think that makes you a decent leader. The the other thing I was going to add is I think that the way we find these leaders, it's this is going to be inflammatory and I'm sure I'm going to get people who are going to ping me. But I think we need to listen to millennials um, because millennials expect more out of their workplaces. Like Kenny and totally. I talked about this, right, is we kind of like in the early days of growing up, like we, we were kind of like paid slaves, right? You kind of just did whatever the company told you to do. And we were trained to say, yeah, yeah, you got it. No, I hate that. But yeah, I'll do it because I'm supposed to, right? Like it's part of the torture process, but millennials, for all the things that they're knocked for, one of the things I think that's amazing is they expect more, even out of our brands, Mm. they expect more, right? Like Mm. millennials are like, you said you're environmentally friendly. I looked at all your shit and it's not environmentally friendly. So I'm not buying you anymore, right? Like you said, you're non-GMO, you're not non-GMO. I proved you're not non-GMO. I'm going to rip you to shreds because you did something that you didn't, you said you were going to do that you didn't do, right? So I feel like these guys are a bit of our canaries in coal mines is if they start squawking about things, it's, it's that, you know, like they, they just, they have a better nose for authenticity in in some Mm -hmm. of these things. I agree that Mm -hmm. would help us. Right. So, and and what I see from an organizational perspective in that is that it, it pushes us from a leadership lens to again, think from a place of non-judgment, because what's the first thing that we do as leaders around millennials? Oh, well, they're just spoiled. They don't want to work. Right. Or, you know, there might be some other judgment that's softer than that, but there's still some sort of judgment Mm -hmm. there. So it's like, okay, what, what does this mean? Um, you know, is there a trend? Are we hearing this from other people too? Not, you know, not trying to um, get provide any disjustice or anything like that. But at the end of the day, it's really taking a look at, okay, what's coming up by way of the actual attitudes and beliefs in my company or my corporation? And what does that mean for alignment with regards to culture? Yeah, yeah. I like where you're going with that. I love okay, it. Gotta do yeah, an, this is another episode. Right? This was the, like a fast thought that was long thought. Fast, not so fast thoughts. Not um, so fast, fast thoughts. Thank, thank you for joining us. This was amazing. Thank Thanks, you for Ash. having that, me back again, guys. Really appreciate it. Happy to jump in at any time. This one's going to brew. We'll do this one again. Okay. Version I like two. it.